Are you looking for more clarity about what HubSpot lifecycle stages are and just how to use them? Then keep watching this HubSpot hack. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. Lifecycle stages are a really simple tool inside of HubSpot, but this simple tool powers a lot about how HubSpot works and how it works to help you grow your business. At its core, lifecycle stages are just a setting that you apply to contacts or companies to really give you an idea of where they're at in their buyer's journey. I like to think of it as the 10,000 foot view, giving you an idea of where they're at from the very first interaction they could take with your company all the way through being happy customers that are referring you more business. So let's take a look at how they're actually used inside of HubSpot. So this is a contact record. The same thing applies to company records. And what it is is a property. We've got the property on the left-hand side here of lifecycle stage. So when you first get HubSpot, you're gonna notice that lifecycle stage is already pre-populated with some options. And these are the HubSpot default options. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to edit them in a moment and why you may or may not wanna do that. So those stages, real quick, are subscriber. So anybody who's signed up for a newsletter or maybe blog alerts from you, somebody that's very, very early in their buyer's journey. Lead is typically gonna be those people that maybe signed up for a webinar or downloaded an ebook, people that aren't quite ready for a sales conversation, but have taken more action than just subscribe for a newsletter. You probably know a little bit more information about them, like their name, their email, maybe their job title. Marketing qualified lead are leads that essentially your marketing team has said these are qualified leads. So maybe they've taken enough, enough activity with your marketing to say mm, they're probably ready for a sales conversation. Or maybe they've even raised their hand and say, you know, show me a demo or I'm ready for a free consultation. Then sales qualified lead are those leads that your sales team agrees. So they've looked at those marketing qualified leads and they say, yep, these are qualified leads. These are the leads that we as a sales team really wanna pursue. This is also where a lot of your salespeople are gonna put their cold prospecting or people that they're reaching out to, maybe they met them at a trade show or something. Because again, those are people that your sales team said, these are qualified for me to take further activity to pursue them. Opportunity is typically gonna be people who are in an active sales process. So if you're familiar with HubSpot, I typically have an open deal, uh, but they're in a sales process where we're talking to them on a regular basis and taking them through a series of steps to get them to buy something. And then customer is going to be somebody who has purchased something from you. And then evangelist is something that is used in a, quite a few different ways by different people, but we like to think of them as happy customers that are likely to make referrals. And usually the easiest way to do that is to say, everybody that's made a referral, we're gonna mark as an evangelist for us if they're a current customer. And then other is for everybody else. So those definitions may or may not line up with your sales process. And so HubSpot does allow you to edit them. So we're gonna to touch on that here. So in order to edit them, you'll go to your settings, go to objects and contacts, and you'll see this lifecycle stage setting. It's important to note that lifecycle stages, while they apply to contacts and companies, they have to be the same stages for both records. So where you're actually gonna edit them is on the contact record, and then you'll see those edits apply to the dropdowns for both contact records and company records. So we're on this lifecycle stage tab here, and this is where we see our lifecycle stages. So we can rename these, we can delete the, these, and we can add these. On this page, we can also set up some basic automation. You can set up automation and advanced workflows and things like that if you wanna get really granular about advancing people from one stage to the next automatically. But HubSpot has some pre-built settings in here for us so we can sync lifecycle stages between contacts and companies. The way this works is anytime a company updates their lifecycle stage, the contact would update to match. We can also set the default lifecycle stage for when we create a contact or company. We can always override this, but by default, as we have it set up here, they're coming in as a lead. And we can set the stage that we want when a deal is created. Typically that's gonna be opportunity. And we can set it when a deal is won. Now, a quick note about editing. So a lot of times when we see uh, people that are new to HubSpot, they, they really wanna jump in and edit these. Maybe marketing qualified lead doesn't mean anything to you. Maybe you've got a sales process with kind of your own names for the stages that people go through from lead all the way to becoming a customer. But we highly recommend to minimize the editing that you do in here. And there's a few reasons for that. So the main reason is that, as I'm gonna show you in a minute, HubSpot has some pre-built functionality around their default lifecycle stages 
that aren't automatically duplicated when you add stages. So I'll show you those in a second. And then the other reason is that when you're onboarding new salespeople, the more things that you have customized in HubSpot, the more you have to customize your training. So for example, for life cycle stages, if you use HubSpot's default stages and you use definitions for those stages that are very close to what HubSpot recommends, we can send them to a HubSpot Academy video or this video, and they can very quickly get up to speed on what your life cycle stages are. However, if we were to customize all of them, now we've got to have a customized training or a customized documentation around what these life cycle stages are and how to use them. So we typically recommend to use these stages as much as, pop, as, much as possible but make sure that the definitions work for you. So maybe the definition that I applied to marketing qualified lead or sales qualified lead doesn't quite give you enough clarity or isn't quite accurate for how you have people progress through your buyer's journey. So what we highly recommend is to go through an exercise where you look at all these life cycle stages, apply your own definitions to them where necessary. And when you're using HubSpot's definitions, just document that as well. So we've got a nice list of documentation of exactly what these life cycle stages are for us and how we use them. With that said, there typically is going to be maybe one or two life cycle stages that you may need to add. One that we see all the time is the former customer stage. So what happens if um, maybe you've got a, uh, a service or a product that is like a subscription or a retainer, something that you're working with contacts on uh, customers on a long-term basis, what happens if they churn off? And, and we usually typically want to know who those people are very quickly in our CRM. So we often do add a former customer contact here. Now I mentioned that HubSpot has some pre-built functionality for you for their default lifecycle stages that aren't duplicated for those edit state for those edited stages or added stages. And what that default functionality is, is a few properties that uh, do some time stamping and do some calculations around that time stamping. So for example, we're just looking at marketing qualified lead here. There's two properties that HubSpot gives you. One is the date that a contact became a marketing qualified lead. And the next one is the time it took from, for somebody to become a, or somebody to move from marketing qualified lead to customer. So we can say, you know, how long were they, uh, after they became a marketing qualified lead, how long did it take for them to buy? So that's some powerful information that we can be reporting on. If we were to say, you know what, we don't like marketing qualified lead, that doesn't mean anything to us, we're just gonna delete that and add our own stage, then you would need to recreate these properties either with calculated fields or workflows, and that could be pretty difficult depending on your level of subscription. So for example, if you're only on uh, a professional version of a hub, you only get five calculated properties, and if you don't have operations hub, it can be difficult to do some calculations and workflows to apply it to a property. So by using the HubSpot default stages, we can take advantage of these properties that HubSpot is creating for us. We can do reporting around those. We can get a lot more clarity. So again, really big recommendation to use those HubSpot lifecycle stages and just apply your own definitions if necessary. So I mentioned for a second reporting. So I just wanted to show you one report. That's another thing about lifecycle stages that's nice about HubSpot is there's a lot of pre-built reports and there's a lot you can do with customized reports around your lifecycle stages. So we've seen some companies say, you know what, these don't really make sense. We're gonna make a custom property and use our own stages. Uh, if you can use that lifecycle stage property, you'll get those, um, pre-calculated pre properties that I just mentioned, you'll also be able to use a ton of pre-built reports uh, and life cycle stages and a bunch of tools across HubSpot. So this is just one report. This is giving us an idea of where we are generating our leads and what stage those leads are coming in at. So in this example, we're getting a lot of leads from organic social, and we can see the majority of those leads are coming in as lead. We've got quite a few marketing qualified leads generated from them. Uh, quite a few sales qualified leads generating from them. So this is a great way to break down your source. You know, maybe the source that's generating the most leads isn't generating your most customers or your most marketing qualified leads or sales qualified leads. So you can get, you can kind of see how breaking down your reports or having reports around your life cycle stages can help you add some clarity to how your marketing and sales efforts are working um, and how they're progressing people through that buyer's journey. So I mentioned that word buyer's journey a lot and what I wanna talk about quick is some mistakes that we see in HubSpot uh, around tracking that buyer's journey. We get quite a few people that watch these videos and, and reach out to us and say, you know, hey, I'm looking to start using HubSpot and I just wanna make sure that it can support the processes that I have and that I can um, you know, see where everybody's at in that process in my CRM. 
And then we also get a lot of people that are using HubSpot that say, you know what, I know I could be getting more clarity from this tool. Uh, it's a little bit of a mess. Our data is a little bit of a mess. We haven't really thought very well about how we're going to have this process set up in HubSpot or how we have it set up. It originally needs to change. And so what we often do with people is take them through what we call a buyer's journey workshop. And really what we're looking at here is what is their process and how is the best way to track that process inside of HubSpot. And one of the things that I really want to make sure is clear is life cycle stages is the foundation of that. So we always start with that life cycle stage. You know, what are the stages we need? What are their definitions? But it's not the only tool that we have. And so I just wanted to show you a very quick diagram that we created that kind of shows you how life cycle stages work with other HubSpot tools. So what we like to do is we like to say, okay, what's your process? You know, what are the buyer actions that somebody takes inside of your buyer's journey? This is an example of a pretty inbound process where they're downloading some content, signaling they're ready for a sales conversation. What are the things that your team is doing internally? And then how are we using HubSpot tools to track that, add clarity to that, help us prioritize our leads? And so Lifecycle Stages, again, is that core, it's that 10,000 foot view, shows us a stage for everybody, no matter where they're at in this process. So these are those, those default stages that we just ran through. And then we've got lead scoring properties. So we've got a lot of lead volume. Uh, we're using scoring properties to tell us when somebody might be qualified. So when somebody moves that marketing qualified lead. Lead statuses are a great way to allow your salespeople to say, okay, we've got all of these sales qualified leads that are being handed to us um, that we wanna pursue. Where are we at with those people? You know, have we, are they brand new that we need to start reaching out to them? Have we tried to reach out to them and not been able to connect? Have we connected with them, et cetera? So lead statuses are an important substage. And then we've got our deal stages. So once we actually have an active opportunity, somebody that is in an ongoing sales process with us, what is the stage that their deal is at? One of the things that we see all the time, deal stages are a great tool. They give us great visualization about where people are at. We see a lot of companies use deal stages the way they should be using life cycle stages. So they're creating deals far too early in the process and that just starts to clog things up. You have more data entry for your team and you start to get a little bit less clarity around your actual open opportunities and starts to screw with things like forecasting and things like that. So uh, we like to keep those deal stages uh, tight. And one of the ways to do that is by using life cycle stages to add clarity when somebody isn't in an open deal. Then we've got ticket pipelines and there's other ways to use scoring models. So I just wanted to show you quick how life cycle stages kind of fit into the bigger picture. But the important thing is that you're using life cycle stages and that you are trying to minimize how much you're editing those and that you've got very clear definitions around what each of those stages are. So I hope that helps add some clarity to your HubSpot life cycle stages. For more tips, tricks, and how to's, make sure you hit that subscribe button and jump down to the footer to subscribe to our email newsletter. See you next time.